All right. Good evening, class. Um, welcome to um, online classes. I know it's been a whirlwind of changes, um, quite a massive transition, but we're going to try and make sure that this transition is seamless and you guys will just slip into it and flow. Um, so today, audit reports. Um, I, I wanted to do a video. I thought it would be only um, justified if I did one because I didn't do a video for you guys. And uh, audit reports. So look, um, is it going to go to the types of audit reports? and uh, fundamentals uh, remember you must work in conjunction with the past papers and the mind the gap study guide page 54 it's got everything in there all the stuff that's going to help you this is the role of the independent auditor um, these are the guys the external auditors they perform the audit so for example if i own a business i will get kpmg deloitte and tush i will get um price waterhouse coopers um, you know all of these auditors to uh, come in and audit my books for the year and the role of the auditor the main role of the auditor is to express an opinion on the fair presentation of the financials so I will present him the financials he will audit it and tell me if it is fairly presented or not um, so the auditor is not required to check every transaction uh, her function or his function is to give the shareholders an opinion like what I told you um, and uh, if the auditor becomes aware of fraud then he has to report it there are consequences if he doesn't report the fraud and auditors are bound by very high ethical standards they are bound by IFRS international financial reporting standards IAS international auditing standards they're bound by ERBA IRBA which is the independent um, regulatory board for for auditors uh, and also SICA, South African Institute of Chartered Accountants. So these are all the boards that they are submitting to. They have to because these boards give you regulations of how to do the audits. And, and as a shareholder, I feel confident when I see an auditor aligning himself with those laws and those boards, then I know my financial statements are going to be accurate. It's going to be um, uh, audited in a professional manner without conflict of interest and due, uh, so because they have to ab abide by these laws. All right, what are the consequences if the auditor do not perform the audit standards? In other words, maybe conflict of interest, maybe he uh, is a family member of that business. In other words, maybe somebody from KPMG came to audit, but he knows this business owner. He wants to make deals, maybe bribes, Another thing could be uh, intentionally or they, they did the audit not up to standard and these are the consequences. Disciplinary hearing by ERBA, they could be arrested if it's fraud, deregistered. The auditing company can be deregistered. They can be suspended, fined, sued by the shareholders um, because this is costing the shareholders money and you didn't audit my books properly, it can, uh, we can uh, sue you guys. The auditors can also lose clients because if clients find out that they didn't perform an audit up to standards, they will say, look, I'm taking my books from you. I don't want you to audit it. I'm going to give it to someone else. They won't be hired by, um, you know, future uh, 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 companies and they won't be trusted. The integrity or character would be questioned. So there's a lot of consequences for auditors if they do not perform accordingly. Now, this is what I'm going to do today. Three types um, of uh, audits you will learn is qualified. A qualified report is a bad report. It is a bad report, uh, but not a very bad report. It, it's, in other words, the auditors will say, um, except for something, except for expenses, except for fixed assets, uh, because we could not uh, we could not verify any further, uh, but the financial statements are fairly presented. So they will they they basically so qualified is a bad report. Um, so we're saying except for something only because of this, but the the rest of the stuff are fine. And we're going to have a look at an example just now. An unqualified is a good report, means everything is well, and 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 the 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 the, uh, the wording in that is the financial statements is fairly presented in all material aspects or respects. 
and then you get a withheld or disclaimer it's a very bad report here the auditor cannot express an opinion at all because everything is in disarray it's in disorder there's chaos there's clutter he can't seem to uh, you know come up with an opinion to to confirm this information is or all the financials are correct because maybe they saying they got 500,000 and worth of equipment, but when the auditor went to audit, there's only 100,000. So it's scary for him to make a good opinion because then you will be facing what we spoke about earlier, probably this maybe to the trunk, to jail. You just never know. All right, we're going to have a look at examples of this is an example of a qualified report. The clue, it will state except for something, the financial statements fairly present. There's an example here. Um, and, and watch this here. In our opinion, except for the advertising expense and income statement, which could not be verified, the financial statements fairly present. Once you see except for something, it's qualified. It's a bad report immediately. The next one is unqualified. Good report. And here's the wording. In our opinion, the financial statements fairly present in all material respects. Immediately, you know, the clue it will state as I mentioned to you now. And then lastly, Woodhull or disclaimer, um, it will say because of the significance, you've got to look at the audit opinion because of the significance of this matter. We have not been able to obtain sufficient audit evidence to provide a basis for an opinion. The moment the auditor cannot express an opinion, it's a disclaimer straight away. Don't go any further. Right, um, these are stuff, audit exam tips, questions, famous questions that could come out. Uh, it's just for you to go over and, you know, go over your past papers. So important. I've got everything here and just go over them. Now I want to go to a past paper quickly and, um, uh, you know, just um, do a question from here on audit reports to give you a bit of uh, assurance. So you provided an extract of the independent auditor's report of Top Star Limited of the financial year. First question, what type of audit report did Top Star receive? Choose from the following, unqualified, qualified or disclaimer. Let's read. In our opinion, the financial statements fairly present in all material respects. The financial position of the company straight away guys it's a good report the answer here is unqualified it's an unqualified report give a reason number one the auditors stated that the financial statements fairly present in all material respects the financial position of the company you can say another reason the auditors did not find anything or any discrepancy which could result in this report uh, financial statements being uh, misrepresented two reasons that's all to whom is the audit report addressed i'm telling you this now every year most of the time this question comes up to whom is the audit report addressed i got that question somewhere here i think there's a chair who is an audit report prepared for guys it is prepared for the shareholders finished done and dusted by the auditors the report is prepared um the report is prepared uh for or to it's addressed to the shareholders give a reason for your answer the shareholders are the owners of the business right they are the ones number two is the auditors were because the auditors were appointed by the shareholders during or in the annual general meeting there's a job there's a right job that's it all right and then the last one explain why the auditor mentioned the following in the report ifrs companies Act. guys look the reason ifrs is international financial reporting standards the reason why the auditor put it there is to give the shareholders assurance that they followed international standards when preparing the financial statements number two most likely this business their shareholders uh, are global in other words this company could be an international company the shareholders could be from overseas so they want to be uh, you know the, the financial statement have to be prepared according to international standards 
I hope that answers two reasons. Number one uh, is to give the shareholders assurance that this financial statements were prepared according to professional ethics and standards. Number two, it's obviously because their shareholders are probably from overseas uh, or internationally uh, uh, based. Then you got company. Why did it say Companies Act? Guys, the Companies Act requires that every company be audited every year. This is to give shareholders assurance that the auditors have abided by the Companies Act. According to the Companies Act, it requires an audit to be performed. It also gives the shareholders assurance that the auditors are complying with laws and regulations. I hope that makes sense to you. You can also Google the memos as well. That will give you um, a, a fair idea. Now I'm going to move to another paper. You're provided with the extract an audit report. I think this is a very similar one to what we viewed in the in, 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 in the PowerPoint. I'm not sure if it's uh, very, but it looks very similar to that. But anyway, there's an extract here and there's a question. Briefly explain the role of an independent auditor. We just spoke about that. The auditor's role and responsibility is to uh, 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 give an opinion on the fair presentation of the financial statements. Number two, the role of the auditor is to avoid conflict of interest and perform the audit according to professional ethics and standards. Um, and, and, and you can even go here. Um, the role of the auditor uh, is, uh, is to, if the auditor becomes aware of fraud, he must report it to the shareholders. All right, so I've explained that. And uh, did Denga, now this is Denga Limited, did they receive a quality, so you can see the same question every year, did they receive a qualified, unqualified or disclaimer, briefly explain your choice, briefly means you don't have to give a very long explanation, let's look at the opinion, that's what we're interested, in our opinion, except for the advertising expenses in the income, the moment you see except, it is a qualified report, it's a bad report but not very bad, so did they receive it is a qualified report explain your choice the auditor's opinion said except for the advertising expenses in the income statement you can state this here you must say the auditors said secondly you can say that the auditors could not verify because the auditors could not verify advertising expenses all right um 4.3.3 state three possible consequences for an independent auditor if he does, had not mentioned advertising expense. What they're saying is, what would have been the consequences for the auditor if he did not um, state this discrepancy? Guys, we spoke about consequences of uh, 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 um, auditors uh, if they do not perform the audit to stand. Disciplinary hearing, they could be arrested, deregistered, suspended, fined, sued by the shareholders, they lose clients, fired by clients, won't be hired, not trusted, integrity, all of this here, anything, you could choose two or three of them. Now, another question that comes out every year, why does, um, uh, uh, if, if, if it's a public company, and they, uh, there's, maybe there's a disclaimer, right? A bad report. And they state, what will this report have for the value of shares in the business? Guys, if it's a disclaimer, it means the auditor cannot express an opinion. It's a bad, bad report. So this is a negative impact on the company. Number one, the value of shares will drop. Shareholders will sell their shares. Potential shareholders won't want to buy in because this is a company that's not credible and this overall credibility of the business will drop, the sales will drop. God, just plenty of things that could happen if it's a disclaimer for a public company. God bless you. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I will be making uh, videos for manufacturing and ratios to help you more further. Have a blessed Easter. Take care.